Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video. And did you know that the word Nimrod used to refer to a hunter? In the book of Genesis, Nimrod is described as a mighty hunter, but beginning in the 1940s, Bugs Bunny sarcastically referred to Elmer Fudd as a Nimrod, which makes sense, you know, because Elmer's a hunter. But the word's meaning started to shift. Although the precise etymological path is debated, now it describes an idiot. Anyway, that's the first of many words that have changed meaning over time that I'm going to talk to you about today. Norman Mailer came up with the term factoid. In his book Marilyn, he described factoids as facts which have no existence before appearing in a magazine or newspaper, creations which are not so much lies as a product to manipulate emotion in the silent majority. But nowadays, of course, rather than fake facts, the word typically refers to trivia. Egregious used to be a good thing. Starting in the 1530s, it meant good or distinguished, but in the late 16th century, it began to take on an ironic tone, and from there, the meaning shifted to a negative connotation. The exact opposite happened to the word fond. It originally came from the word fawn, meaning foolish. Now it's a much nicer term, but it does imply that you're a fool for whatever you're fond of. Backlog used to be much more literal. It was the biggest log in a fireplace. Because it was big, it was put in the back where it could burn for many hours before it had to be replaced. Another one that used to be more literal, blockbuster. That was a bomb that could destroy an entire block. It eventually came to mean anything with a massive effect. Nowadays, we mostly use it to describe triumphs in the entertainment industry. Come to think of it, the entertainment also uses it to describe extremely modest successes. You know, like, the Emoji Movie was a blockbuster. I mean, that's a very small block. There used to be a different kind of mugger, a person who sold mugs. In the 18th century, mugs that looked like human faces were in style, so it became a slang term for face. It's too bad face mugs are no longer in style, but we're trying to make lobster mugs into a thing. Cheater also used to be a profession. In the 14th century, a cheater was an officer who guarded land that had been inherited by the state, that is, the monarch. The land was known as the king's S-cheat, and this happened automatically when a landowner died and didn't have have heirs. The cheaters developed reputations for changing their assessments for their own gain, so it quickly came to mean a dishonest player or person. It isn't confirmed, but some claim that Guy Fox is responsible for the current meaning of the word guy. It started when people would burn statues known as guys on November 5th, and it came to mean anyone who looked grotesque and then eventually, it just meant any old guy. Speaking of guy, girl has changed meanings too. Back in the day, girls were just young people in general. According to Merriam-Webster, when the word prestigious was coined in the 1540s, it meant relating to illusion, conjuring, or trickery. Now it mostly means honored. Demagogue used to mean a popular leader with good oratorical skills. The last part is still true, but nowadays the word refers to a leader who uses those skills to deceive people. That fact reminds me of so many Donald Trump quotes, but the one that most comes to mind is this one. But the Bastille Day parade was, now that was a super duper, okay, I mean, that was very much more than normal. They must have had 200 planes over our heads. Normally, you have the planes and that's it, like the Super Bowl parade, and everyone goes crazy and that's it. That happened for, and you know what else that was nice? It was limited. You know, it was two hours and the parade ended. It didn't go a whole day. They didn't go crazy. You don't want to leave but you have to or you want to leave, really. <laughs> anyway, this is a good one uh, for readers of Thomas Hobbes and Jonathan Swift to know, as they often use demagogue in its original meaning. Another compliment that became an insult, smug. Starting in the 16th century, it meant well-dressed. Now it's prideful or conceited. Myriad came from Greek mathematicians. The letter M stood for myriad and meant specifically 10,000. And a myriad myriad was 100 million. Nowadays, it just means like several or maybe slightly more than several? The term broadcast has been around since the 18th century. It used to exclusively mean to sow seeds by scattering them. You can still use it to mean that, but most people now are talking about a program that's being transmitted. We've simplified the term outlaw a lot since its original usage. Many now just say it to mean a fugitive on the run, but originally it referred to someone who is no longer protected by the law. You know, an outlaw. So another citizen, for instance, could commit a crime against that person and not be 
be prosecuted. Chaperone came from a practically identical word that referred to a hood that noble men and women wore. It came to mean a different kind of human protection. Heartburn, of course, has never really had anything to do with the heart. Nowadays, we use it to talk about stomach problems, but before that, it meant jealousy or hatred. The word elope originally comes from an Anglo-French word with a slightly different definition, to run away. In the 17th century, elope as we know it came into fashion, meaning running away to get married. But interestingly, Merriam-Webster points out that the word specifically involved a lack of parental permission. Nowadays, people use it just conversationally to mean a small wedding, so the definition may be shifting again. By the way, I have one piece of advice for all the engaged couples out there. Elope. Save the money that you would otherwise be spending on your wedding and spend it on literally anything else. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Doom had a slightly more specific meaning before it referred to a generally negative destiny. In 15th century England, it meant a law, or the sentence you received in court. Naughty is a word that makes sense once you pick it apart. Not means nothing, so of course those who were naughty before the 15th century were the poor, who had nothing. Eventually, its definition shifted shifted to those who were promiscuous, then it became more benign to mean mischievous, although it does still sometimes mean promiscuous or suggestive, especially in the UK. The root of awful, awe, meant fear or dread in Old English, and they both evolved during the 18th century to have more to do with wonder, but awful eventually got back to its roots. Get it? Eerie means slightly creepy nowadays, but it's believed that it came from an Old English word that meant cowardly. In the Netherlands, meerkats are a type of monkey. Some have speculated that the word ultimately derives from a Sanskrit word meaning ape. Eventually, European explorers picked up on the word and created a folk etymology that it was a sea cat and began using it for any exotic overseas animal, including the ones that we know today. We keep ours in a jar. It seems particularly weird when nouns change meaning. For instance, diaper came from a Greek word that meant pure white, and the English word used to mean white fabric with a diamond weave design. Which I guess, you know, is a diaper most of the time. Our viewers who also happen to be Latin scholars probably already know that matrix comes from a word meaning female animal used for breeding. In Middle English, it referred to the womb. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you about a word that has very recently changed meaning. Merriam-Webster has decided that literally can officially be defined as Figuratively, thanks to modern slang, it's acceptable to use the term to mean either, despite the definitions being, you know, exact opposites. But language is about how we use it, even when how we use it is weird. Thank you for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. And as we literally say in my literal hometown, don't forget to be awesome.